Hey everybody, how's it going? I am your host Adrian coming to you almost live from lovely Petaluma, California here in Studio MC3 at Quick Surf Internet Studios. Linux News Log is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Do feel free to head on over to techpodcast.com and check out all the other technology related shows over there as well. I'd like to encourage everybody to visit us online over at quicksurf.com. Please do subscribe to the show if you haven't already done so. For those of you who have, thank you so much for subscribing and supporting the show. And with that, let's go ahead and get into the cool stories for this episode. Starting off over at the register, Valve is set for an OpenGL big reveal at an upcoming conference. So uh, games giant Valve says it will release details about a promised successor to the OpenGL graphics API at a conference in San Francisco this uh, next month. They've scheduled a session for March 5th at the Games Developer Conference where it will talk about the new release of the graphics API in a presentation called GL Next, the Future of High Performance Graphics. So uh, they say GL Next will be the singular choice for developers who demand peak performance. Um, They'll present a technical breakdown of the API, advanced techniques, and live demos of real-world applications running on GL Next drivers and hardware. So uh, the reason why uh, this is kind of a big deal is uh, their company's Linux-based Steam OS platform, which they're trying to make a viable alternative to uh, the Xbox One and PS4, relies on this new spec in its gaming graphics. So this is this is kind of a big deal for uh, Valve, and it's you know something that they're pretty keen to get. Uh, developers uh, on board for because if, if they don't you know all the all the software developers know that if you don't have <laughs> well at least all the companies that make software know that if you don't have software developers making software for your platform you're pretty much dead in the water so uh, you know it'd be pretty interesting to see uh, how you know what comes of this and uh, how they uh, you know how, how they get it implemented and rolled out and everybody using it from sdtimes.com, Google is quietly rolling out Android 5.1 Lollipop, and the Linux Foundation uh, announces ContainerCon. Container con. So, um, the first major update to its latest mobile operating system, uh, Android 5.1 Lollipop, is has been rolled out on select Android One devices. Uh, this was first spotted uh, on the Indonesian Android One page and later confirmed by Android Police, so another website. Uh, The update is said to offer improved performance, longer battery life, and data conservation settings. So it should be pretty interesting. Uh, Also in the same vein, the Linux Foundation, there's a new event that they are debuting. It's focused on bringing together open source developers and top container users. The event ContainerCon will take place in Seattle United States, Washington State, uh, United States, August 17th through the 19th, 2015. So pretty cool. Definitely uh, check it out if you're going to be in that area at that time. From uh, customstoday.com.pk, this is pretty cool. Raspberry Pi 2 is on sale for $35. That's right. It has a quad-core CPU uh two gigs of ram more horsepower so the raspberry pi 2 packs more memory and a faster processor than its predecessor which is enough to turn it into a more functional pc but it's still a 35 dollar product so don't expect any miracles um pretty big step forward though with all that being said it's twice as much rem- memory um one gig of ram as the pi one and it's powered by a quad-core uh, ARM Cortex A7 processor running at 900 megahertz. So we're going from you know the Model B version to a quad-core 900 megahertz version. Pretty nice. Um, the the old version was 700 megahertz single core. It's enough to turn, uh, according to uh, Eben Upton, uh, it's enough to turn the Pi 2 into a usable PC. Well, I can think of a whole lot more of the things uh, to do with <laughs> that added power. Um, <clears throat> so, um, you know, there's a handful of other stuff uh, that uh, that 
they you know have updated you know but other than that you know it's it's still raspberry pi so you know awfully useful especially for 35 bucks it's pretty awesome for 35 bucks from appdevelopermagazine.com the linux foundation announces a guide to building and deploying to the open cloud the 2015 guide to the open cloud open cloud projects profile is the linux foundation's second publication on the open cloud which was first published in October of uh, 2013. The updated guide adds new projects and technology categories that have gained importance in the past year. Um, the report covers well-known projects like Cloud Foundry, OpenStack, Docker, and Zen Project, and up-and-comers such as Apache, Mesos, CoreOS, and Kubernetes. So the purpose of this guide is to serve as a starting point for users when considering which projects to use in building and deploying their own open clouds. So uh, pretty cool. Definitely check it out, especially if you do a lot of cloud development. Uh, from fiercio.com or fiercecio.com, I guess you could call it. Microsoft releases its .NET Core CLR as open source code on GitHub. This is a you know huge deal. A um, couple of caveats though: the code still only runs on Windows, but the fact that they're making it open source, you know, it is it's it's good. You know, it it tells me that you know they're making some good faith um, movements. Um, it, at some point, I would expect it uh, to run on other platforms. Somebody's got to put in some time, you know, doing a little bit of port work or something of that nature, but. Uh, other than that, you know, there's no reason why it can't, especially now that it's open source and everybody can look at the inner workings on how it works. So pretty cool. Definitely check it out, especially if you're a developer. From uh, geekygadgets.com, I, I saw this and was like, wow, this is pretty cool. I'm definitely going to include it here in the show. The Open Pi Raspberry Pi powered open source wireless system. This is pretty neat. Uh, makers, hobbyists, and developers that enjoy using the Raspberry Pi to create projects may be interested in OpenPi. It's a new piece of hardware that's powered by a 32-bit ARM-based Raspberry Pi compute module. Uh, and soon, the quad-core Raspberry Pi version 2. So OpenPi is fitted with Wi-Fi connectivity. Uh, the Bluetooth LE modules allows the small hardware to communicate with ultra-low power remote sensors. Uh, it's equipped with wireless networking that gives the OpenPi a connection to the internet, and it's designed to help makers create smartphone-controlled appliances and Internet of Things hub, uh, along with a whole bunch of other stuff. It's pretty cool. They have a video of it uh, in the article that I'm posting to uh, uh, in the show notes, so definitely check it out. From ITWire.com System D has plans to include a UEFI bootloader. Now we all know System D and especially uh, its author Harry or Henry Harry Leonard. I'm sorry, Leonard Pottering. I don't know. I keep thinking Harry Potter, Leonard Pottering. Um, has has had its fair share of. Uh, controversy if you will uh, the system and service manager uh, system d has plans to include a bootloader that can support uefi secure boot according to a report of a talk given by the main system d developer leonard pottering the bootloader gummy boot is being considered um, however it would be an optional feature and users would be able to continue utilizing their standard bootloader if they so wished you know Again, this is one of those things. Personally, I'm not a huge fan of System D, but I, I understand a lot of the reason why why they're doing it. So anyway, uh, with that being said, that's pretty much all we've got for this episode. Um, please do subscribe to the show if you haven't already done so. As always, everything we've talked about is linked up in the show notes, which you can find online over at quicksurf.com, or if you're watching this on YouTube, it's down right underneath this video here in the show notes area. And with that, I will see all of you on the next episode. I'll see you then. Bye.